Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Yesterday, for those of you following the political calendar, yesterday was Super Tuesday, which makes today Wednesday. <laughs> and the results are in. Joe Biden and Donald Trump dominated Super Tuesday. Now, for a rematch that everyone claims they don't want, it's awfully popular at the polls. It's like the whole nation is ordering takeout and deciding, okay, we're gonna do the Thai place again. <laughs> Even though the noodles stick together in a weird cube the shape like the box it comes in, <laughs> as long as we all agree we're not getting the sweet and sour Nikki Haley. <laughs> now, it was also Tuesday in space! Because <laughs> hundreds of miles above Earth, two astronauts cast their votes. Here are Jasmine Mogbelli and Laurel O'Hara pointing to their makeshift voting booths. And even though there are only two of them, it still took the old lady volunteer 15 minutes to find their names on the registration. <laughs> let's see here, let's see here. I've got, I've got, a, I've, I've got Orion, comma, Constellation. No, okay. Jar, comma, Jar Banks. No. Uh, it was a good night for Joe Biden, who rolled to big margin victories across the country. Well, that makes sense. For Biden, everything needs to be big margin and extra large font. <laughs> Biden's biggest competitor wasn't actually a person. It was protest votes for uncommitted over his Israel policy. But there were also some people who finished behind Biden, none more so than Dean Phillips, seen here counting all of his supporters. <laughs> Phillips is from Minnesota, but lost his home state to Biden in a landslide then took to Twitter, congratulations to Joe Biden, uncommitted, Marianne Williamson and Nikki Haley for demonstrating more appeal to Democratic Party loyalists than me. <laughs> he then slammed his bedroom door, blasted My Chemical Romance, and said he wasn't even hungry for dinner, but could he have chicken fingers? <laughs> Phillips later added another tweet, further moping, and Jason Palmer. <laughs> now, you may be asking, who is Jason Palmer? The answer is yes. No one knows who Jason Palmer is. <laughs> what we do know is that President Biden lost the Democratic caucuses in American Samoa to Jason Palmer, a previously little-known long-shot challenger. Yes, previously little-known, also currently little-known. <laughs> I myself just recently learned that a Jason Palmer is half Jason, half lemonade. <laughs> Apparently. There you go. Why not? I'm not rushing anybody. I'm in no hurry to get home. Take all the time you want. <laughs> Apparently, this Palmer person does exist because a quick Google image search reveals that he's one of these guys. <laughs> Which one? This November, America decides. <laughs> Whichever one he is, Palmer was able to get 56% of the vote in American Samoa, while Biden got 44%. Woohoo! Where are my palm maniacs at? I mean, come on, it's electric. This guy makes Dean Phillips look like Ryan Binkley. And if you know who those people are, you're too invested in politics. Go see Dune or something. <laughs> now, before you get even remotely impressed by any of this, keep in mind, Palmer won the caucus by the middle school basketball score of 51 to 40. <laughs> Not percent, votes. <laughs> The Associated Press describes Palmer as a Baltimore resident who has worked for various businesses and nonprofits. What an inspiring biography. <laughs> Reminds me of Obama's memoir, Dreams of My Various Businesses and Nonprofits. <laughs> After, thank you, thank you. <laughs> After his victory, Palmer admitted that he'd never even been to American Samoa but that he's been campaigning remotely, doing, <laughs> doing Zoom town halls, which explains his campaign slogan, Palmer 2024, hey, Phil, you're on mute. Phil, can someone <laughs> unmute Phil? <laughs> Palmer seems to have focused exclusively on American Samoa, courting voters with videos like this. You're probably wondering, who is this Jason Palmer? I've never heard of him before. Well, in the mainland, I'm actually very well known. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It's true, American Samoa. He is so well known on the mainland. <laughs> Why, here in New York, or as we call it, Palmervania, 
<laughs> Tourists come from all over to take pictures with the Times Square Jason Palmers and see the world famous Radio City Palmettes. <laughs> What's this? I mean, told we have breaking news. One o'clock this afternoon, Dean Phillips ended his presidential campaign. <laughs> Evidently, he wants to spend more time with his family, reminding them who he is. <laughs> In his announcement, Phillips endorsed President Biden. Game, set, match. <laughs> yeah. It's over, baby. Biden is now uh, adding the entire Dean Phillips coalition. <laughs> it's a big tent. Sleeps two. There were even uh, fewer surprises over on the Republican side, where Trump rolled to victory across the country. He did especially well in the few states where he isn't currently on trial. <laughs> after the polls closed, Trump turned his attention to the general election, going after Joe Biden. What's happened with inflation has been unbelievable. A lot of people say, a lot of experts have said, the stock market's the only thing that's doing well, and that's doing well because our poll numbers are so much higher than Joe Biden's. Everything good is because of me. Everything bad is because of Joe. Stock market, me. Inflation, Joe. Taylor Swift, me. Cars for Kids song, Joe. <laughs> the laughter of little children, that's me. That little Amazon fish that swims up your penis and shoots out spikes. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> the... And of course, he gave a shout out to all the cool people in attendance. This is an incredible group of people. So many celebrities that I'm not going to introduce any because I'm just going to get myself in trouble if I do that because I'll leave out most of you. He sounds like a high school kid pretending he's been kissed. Oh, <laughs> wow, yeah, I've had so many girlfriends. I'm not going to name them all because I'm sure I'll forget someone, but <laughs> wow, I mean, girl lips. <laughs> They're just like two hot dogs. So. So sexy and kind of kind of slimy if you leave them in the water for too long. <laughs> Trump was riding high, but there were some signs from voters that he won't have an easy ride in November. In North Carolina, even though Trump took the state, one in four Republican primary voters said they would feel dissatisfied if Trump got the nomination. Really? Just dissatisfied? <laughs> we're talking about an existential threat to the Republic, not clicking the frowny face at the airport bathroom. <laughs> How is the gulag, huh? Out of paper towels. <laughs> also, despite Trump's dominant polling, he didn't get a total sweep because Nikki Haley won Vermont. <laughs> yeah, Vermont. Which means, by law, she gets her own Ben & Jerry's flavor. <laughs> so keep an eye out for half-baked explanation of how slavery didn't cause the Civil War. <laughs> but still, still, it wasn't enough, which is why this morning Nikki Haley dropped out of the 2024 presidential race. So long. America will never forget you. Ooh. <laughs> I want to say Narky Stanley. <laughs> Nibbly Snacky. <laughs> Sticky Hale Bop. <laughs> now, notably, Haley did not endorse Trump, but the rest of the GOP establishment is falling in line. In fact, this morning, Mitch McConnell endorsed Trump. That headline again, Tortoise endorses hair. <laughs> it's nice. It's a nice family joke. It's a family joke. Wake up the kids. Tell them that joke. This is a final cynical act of evil and cowardice from a man who has made a cynical career of it. McConnell has already stepped down from leadership, and his parting gesture is to hand his shriveled blue ball sack to the man who launched racist attacks on his wife, called him a dumb son of a bitch and a broken down crow. That's right. That's right, Mr. President. It's me, Mitch. Your dumb little broken down crow. <laughs> How long was I out? How long was I out? What year is it? Now that the race is set, the country is looking ahead to November, and there are some disturbing numbers out there. For instance, this weekend, the New York Times published a poll that showed Trump leading Biden by 5% among registered voters. 
Okay, now I'm less worried about the candidates and more worried about the mental competence of the voters. <laughs> Someone should give us a cognitive test. <laughs> but don't panic, because the methodology is so off, it led one member of the pundocracy to observe, there is something wrong at the New York Times. Yeah, there is something wrong at the New York Times, and it's called connections. Let me get this straight. Turncoat and windsock are words ending in clothing, but lawsuit isn't? My streak should be at 25, and you will be hearing from my lawyers, you bastards. <laughs> but another thing, but another thing. That, that New York Times poll is a mess. It found Trump winning the female vote by 1% when Biden carried women in 2020 by 11 points. Somehow, I doubt Trump has won back over 12% of women with his empowering message, I'm a rapist. <laughs> the poll is so off that it says 12% of Democrats support Dean Phillips, leading Dean Phillips to actually tweet, when a New York Times Siena poll shows me a 12%, you better believe it's flawed. <laughs> Only 5% even know who I am. That, that is so sad. He thinks 5% of people know who he is. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Mr. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. When we come back, the billionaires are billionaire so hard, you won't believe it.